Okay, so in the previous video, we talked uh, briefly about degrees and DMS. Again, this very arbitrary thing. And math, math just isn't a particularly arbitrary idea. We really like it to transcend certain languages and we try to come up with something that is kind of universal and makes sense. So, um, so you know, going really, really far back in time, um, you know, people use degrees and, and we still do by and large, but there's certain places in mathematics where there's a, another unit that just sort of makes sense. And so there was a mathematician by the name of Coates um, who was working uh, Roger Coates back in the 1700s, just trying to come up with something that would just be a little bit more universal and make sense. And, and I don't know this for a fact, but I think it has to do with a study of calculus because how calculus works in this other system. And so as he was playing with this, idea, um, he, he kind of started messing around with, um, with the idea of, well, what if you did something just a little bit different? And I'm not certain if my, my camera's backwards. I think it's okay. What I'm excited to do is, is the following. And so hopefully this is going to make sense to you. But, but what I did is I cut out some little pieces of a pipe cleaner right here. You can see there, there may be a little curve right now because I was playing with them a little bit. But what he did is he said, well, what if I were to say this radius right here is two on the paper that I have. And what if I just put this piece of pipe cleaner, I was actually planning on doing uh, some licorice for this, but I just didn't make it in the store. And then, uh, you know, what if I, instead of using that one, I made this one four units long and I placed this right here on the fourth radius, right like and this one is six, and I, and I placed it on the sixth radius. These things are a little hard to get get it to go where I want. And then I have an eighth right here, and then I have ten. And um, there's there's sort of a, a result of my and over the years that you might notice that no matter what, as I put these things on their radii, um, and again, little more precise. But um, now, of course, I don't do that. But as you place these things in their region, what you'll notice is there is sort of a line that it, that it makes right here. And again, if I could make this absolutely perfect you would see that these things all line up and they will actually have exactly the same angle. Um, so as they move along, they end up with the same kind of angle radiating from here if I line them up along that axis. And so this guy, Roger Cohen, he played with different radius correspondence where he decided to maybe name this thing the radius, uh, the radius angle or whatever. But what he ended up coming up with, or the, the, the language that people came up with, is to call this right here one radian. And it's kind of an interesting measurement because it is now not an arbitrary thing. It's literally within every circle, a radian is the precise angle that perfectly matches up with the radius of that particular thing. <clears throat> now, one thing that's kind of interesting about that is if you start right here, and uh, bear with me for one moment, I'm going to take some of these things off. You'll notice it doesn't matter how big the circle is, one radian, every single one of these has that exact same angle that comes from it. Now, this, what's interesting is how many of these would it take to make a circle? So, you know, we know that there's 360 degrees, but how many radians would make a circle? So if we work our way around this circle, what you'll notice is it looks like I have these radians for most of the way around. Oh my gosh, this is this thing is not the case. So it's pretty close, but not quite there. So I'm gonna keep going. And uh, we're gonna keep going just a little bit further. So it took a little over three to get there. So I don't think I'm gonna quite make it with six. So here is my fourth, there's the fifth, there's my sixth, and you'll notice that I didn't quite make it. Well, what's a little bit interesting that you may or may not recall, but back in um, 
elementary school, uh, not elementary school, I shouldn't say, honestly, this would be just a couple of years ago, you had a formula in math too where you learned that the circumference of a circle was always two times pi times the radius. So as it turns out, the reason why this didn't quite fit is that the circumference should be two pi of those radians. So that's kind of a cool thing. That's why it was just a little bit more than six of them. So that should line up pretty well. So we're going to be, for um, the majority of this semester, dealing with this interesting little unit system called a radian. Um, and so we can start with this little idea. Degrees. Now, one thing that I do want to stress to you is that notice when I say degree here, that is a unit system, just like an inch or a meter or something like that. It must be named. However, when you're dealing with radians, you actually don't have to say that it's in radians because that's an automatically given piece of information. Now, as such, you know, when you go back and forth through there, if somebody wants to say, hey, I, I wanted to know what something else is, so imagine that what we had was, say, 150 degrees. That if you wanted to go from 150 degrees and get over here to radians, then what we could do is we could multiply by um, pi over 180 degrees. Now, the reason why, of course, if 2 pi is 360, sorry, that's so blurry, um, but if 2 pi is 360 degrees, then that means that 1 pi would be 180 degrees. And so just like what you've done in other unit conversions, you would notice that 30 divides perfectly into both of those, and so that would be five pi over six. And you'll notice that I did not put any kind of unit system on this, but I did over here. Or if we say had 105 degrees, again, multiply by pi over 180, we would be able to notice that both of these are divisible by 15. And if 15 goes into that seven times, 15 goes into that 12 times, that would be seven pi over 12. Now, what I sometimes will do is I will just ignore, you know, if I'm wanting to go kind of quick on those problems, I will do something like this. So 105, I just divide by 180, math in enter, and you notice the seven 12s, and then I go ahead and I put the pi in afterwards. So, you know, obviously if I put the pi in, that's going to be an irrational number and my calculator will not be able to do that. So it's fairly simple. Now, I do know that sometimes people look at these problems and they're like, well, um, what if, uh, will it always be a really nice number? And that answer is no. These are irrational values, so they're not going to be nice. Now, going the other way, where I want to write that in degrees. Well, then all we would need is some idea of what that is. So I would multiply by 180 degrees per pi. Notice the pi's would cancel. I do a little simplification. Three goes into 180 60 times, and so uh, that's going to be 120 degrees. Pretty simple little idea, and so we like to go back and forth between those. And uh, as such. Um, what I personally know is that if you have pi is 180 degrees, then we can very easily do little things like, well, what is pi over 2? Well, that would clearly be half of this, which would be 90 degrees. Or if we wanted to say maybe, hey, what is 60 degrees? Well, you know, I'm going back and forth because these are very significant angles in mathematics. Um, you'll recognize them from some triangles that you study back in math, too. Um, but notice this is exactly one third of 180. That makes it pi over three. Or you could say um, 45 degrees. 45 degrees is exactly one fourth of this or half of that. And so if it's half of 90, then that would be pi over four. So by just knowing that pi and 180 degrees are equivalent, that makes it pretty fast. So these are the big ones right here that I want you to know, but I'm going to add one more. And of course, pi over six, you'd probably be able to tell, well, if we took pi and divided by six, that would be 30 degrees. And so these are kind of the big ones. And we can play with that a lot. Like, for example, right up here, you notice I said five pi over six was 150 degrees. Well, that makes sense because if one pi over six is 30, then five of those would be five times as big. 
So that would make 2 pi over 320 degrees. Or it would make 210 degrees, 7 of these pi over 6 guys, because it would be 7 30s. Now, as it turns out, what makes that sort of useful, at least one of the things that makes it useful is the length. length, what you're studying is the path of a length along a circle, like a circular path. So this would be our arc length. Now, back in math two, the way we taught you guys to do that is we taught you to take um, basically a portion. Remember, we just said that the circumference is two pi r, right? And so imagine what we have is we have a circle over here, and we had its radius is 12 inches. And let's say we wanted to map out an arc that's 120 degrees. So I wanted to literally find out how far is it if I move along this circle in an arc of 120, how long would that piece be? The way you were taught to do that back in uh, math two is we use the letter S for arc length. I wish we didn't use S, but that's just kind of a protocol, what we usually do, is you would start off with 2 pi r, full value, 2 pi r. And then you would multiply it by the fact that you had 120 degrees out of a total of 360 degrees because you had one third of the circle. Well, what's kind of interesting as you work through that process is if you look, you'll see this 2 pi right here and that 360. Well, that's exactly what you do when you convert something from degrees to radians. So as it turns out, rather than looking at what you can do is this is what happens if you are in degrees but if you are in radians and this is really important if you are in radians your arc length is just your radius times your angle but that angle must be measured in radians so again as mentioned earlier so, you know, I can go through this process and finish it off for eight pi inches. But if I use the new formula, my radius being 10 inches, earlier I mentioned that 120 degrees right here, 120 degrees was exactly 2 pi over 3. So if we multiply by 2 pi over 3, and instead of using degrees, I used radians, 12 times 2 pi over 3 is exactly 8 by inches. So this is a very, very simple formula, S equals R theta, that we will use for arc length. But again, it's really important that you understand that if you're going to deal with arc length, this arc length formula has to either be converted or you have to have it in radians when you do your story. And so that's kind of the, the, the big uh, nuts and bolts of dealing with those things. So again, if you want to go from degrees to radians, multiply by pi over 180 and reduce. Or if you want to go from radians to degrees, you multiply by 180 over pi. Lastly, remember that degrees have units, radians do not have units. Okay, so that's video number two. And uh, we will, uh, I have one more little thing to do on this uh, opening uh, piece of data um, and uh, that about uh, angular versus linear velocity that we'll deal with in video number three.